I felt the need to write this because of the obvious lies, ignorance, and misinformation out there about what a woman is, what a man is, what a human being is, and what their purposes are, and to avoid further damage to mankind as a result of these lies, ignorance, and misinformation. Have you ever wondered why the definition of what a woman is is being talked about so much on the internet these days? It is obvious to me that many do not even know what a human being is, so how could they possibly know what a woman or a man is? Let's try this one. A human being is an immortal spiritual being or a spiritual energy unit that has been given a mind and a body for the purpose of existing and creating in the physical universe. So, a human being is a spiritual being. We are not our bodies, our minds, or our brains. These are things that we have, but they are not what we are. This is known by millions of people on Earth, so we are well on our way to having a spiritually enlightened planet. What we also have now is a planet too full of non-believers, spiritually ignorant and spiritually blind people, who are causing or contributing to more chaos, greed, racism, more spiritual ignorance and more spiritual blindness for us all, simply because they do not know what a human being, woman, or man really is. What is a woman? A spiritual being or a spiritual energy unit that has been given a mind and a body for the purpose of existing and creating the physical universe. What is a man? The same, of course, but there are differences in the purposes of each that we need to keep mankind alive and thriving in the physical universe. Male and female characteristics, personalities, and purposes are given to each spiritual being or we choose them ourselves before we are born. Of course, being made in the image of God, the greatest creator of all, each one of us has the ability and power to create many things, including our personalities and purposes. We are all creators of our own universe. We are all creators in life, in the spirit world, and here on earth, in the physical world. History is full of stories of people creating incredible things. Creating will never stop. It was God's purpose, and it is also our purpose. People who are truly spiritually aware think differently and are living life much differently than those who live life without any kind of spiritual knowledge. Many of these spiritually ignorant people hold high positions in life and have platforms that give them huge audiences and followers. So their ideas, beliefs, and non-spiritual viewpoint are all accepted as truth by many. It is easy to say something does not exist if one cannot see it. But the spirit world and spirits can be seen and have been seen by many, and who says seeing is our only way of perceiving what is there? Can you not feel yourself being a separate, living, thinking, and problem-solving entity that is not your body or brain? There are other ways to perceive souls besides using your eyes. Having an awareness of yourself, which is a spiritual being, can easily be done by closing your eyes and thinking. The thing that is doing the thinking is you, a spiritual being. The place where you do this thinking in your mind, which is located in the spiritual world, not your brain, a physical universe body part that is used by the spirit as a physical universe switchboard to control the body and keep it living. Non-spiritual people seem to believe there is only one lifetime for this can cause one to want to get as much as they can, as soon as they can, and no matter how, because you only have one life. This is greed, and it is dangerous, because it causes crimes and other dysfunctional activities and beliefs that have been causing mankind all kinds of problems and pain. This can also cause people to feel apathetic or have a what's-the-use attitude. So a lifetime of greed or apathy are some of the results for people who believe the lies and misunderstandings about the spirit, life, 
and our purposes spread by the non-believers. The silence about the subject of what we really are is apparent all over the planet, especially in the world of politics and most media outlets. The fact that spiritual existence is ignored by so many of these people in high places make this planet a very chaotic, seemingly one-dimensional, hateful, and violent place to live. Note, spiritual beings do only have one life, but it lasts forever and one can have it many lifetimes on earth with many bodies. The spirit goes from being born or created as an energy unit or spiritual being in the spirit world. Then the spirit gets to have a baby body and live and grow in the physical universe. That body dies and the being goes back into the spirit universe until they decide to go back to earth or they can decide to stay in the spiritual universe and build or find a heaven or hell for themselves. Either way, they can always come back to earth. They live forever so they have time to do what they want. Remember, we were made in the image of God, the greatest creator ever, so we can create many things we never thought we could. Has mankind not been creating better things for the world since the beginning of time? Maybe this writing can help make the good things we all need and want to happen faster, even in Washington, D.C. What we need is the truth about what we are and what our abilities and purposes are. Correctly defining the words human being, woman, and man bring the truth into view. Making laws with the truth about these things in mind will surely make a difference. Truly spiritually aware people will look at the personality, character, emotions, accomplishments, spiritual beliefs, moral values, ethics, how a person treats others, and many other things when getting to know someone for whatever reason. They will communicate with that person and find out about them. Skin color has no significance when they are getting to know someone. If they have to judge them or make a decision about them, skin color will not be considered to be of any importance at all when finding enough about them to make a fair judgment or decision. They will definitely know that this person is a spiritual being made in the image of God and capable of creating great things no matter what the person being judged believes. All white people are now being considered to be automatically racist because their ancestors were white. The real history of a person and their ancestors is much more complex than just their connections and genetics from one lifetime. There are spiritual genetics too, a much longer line of spiritual genes or spiritual blueprints than our physical universe genes. A spiritual being has a history that includes their time in the spirit world and many lifetimes in the physical universe. To label someone a racist because of connections to only their current lifetime ancestors or current earthling connections is ignoring all the person learned in the spirit world and it's each lifetime that they lived. We have all lived in many environments with many opportunities to learn about life and racism. So we had many sources to learn things from and inherent beliefs from besides our current lifetime ancestors. Labeling a person a racist and demanding reparations because of what some ancestor or ancestors did before they were born is insane because most of what the person learned from other sources besides their current lifetime is not known or ignored when they are judged to be racist. Each individual being is unique with the ability to learn about what is right and what is wrong in their past lives, in the spirit world, or in the current physical universe. Each one of us was made with energy from God. No matter how much other energy, good or bad, that we encounter or are given by others, we still have his energy in each of us. And that is the most powerful, best to feel, and best to get more of energy that exists. 
That is why good always wins over evil and right always wins over wrong. If someone calls me a racist just because I am a white man, I say to them, no, I am an immortal spiritual being who has lived many lifetimes. In some of them I had black skin and I was a slave. In some I had white skin, in some I had yellow, in some I had brown, and in some my skin was red. What are you? What is a human being to you? Another thing to consider is the fact that there are other planets in the universe that can sustain life forms. Who said the only planet that spiritual beings can go to and live on is Earth? The physical universe is endless, so the chances of there being other human-like life forms for spiritual beings to live in the physical universe should not be dismissed. A non-spiritual mind or a one lifetime in depth forever mind believes in limits that a spiritual person does not believe in. Because spiritual beings have lived past lives, they learn things before the current lifetime. We also learn things in the spirit world when we were there. If you learn more constructive things than destructive things, and you do more constructive things, the chances of you living a long and prosperous life are much better than if you learn nothing at all. Knowing or feeling that racism is wrong or not even giving it a thought are possible. This is evident when we put small children of different races in a room together. They may be with the most racist family ever, but that does not mean they will be racist. Even if their family tree is full of slave owners and murderers, that does not mean they will be a racist. Why? Because we are spiritual beings and we existed elsewhere before we were born and we learn things elsewhere that we could remember or feel that would be the truth. Skin color is not a reason to hate someone. Plus, before we were indoctrinated to hate, we were made with the love of God in us. We had the purest, most loving, and most understanding energy built into us way before any negative or racist energy was ever near us. This energy and love can get distorted and buried by hate and other negative energy flows in some of us, but it will win in the end. I could feel racism was wrong when I was very young. Eventually, I felt better when I thought about spiritual things like music, laughter, sports. Yes, sports can be spiritual. Spiritual beings invented them and played them. Art, beauty, and doing things that made me happy. While I lived with, went to school with, played sports with, and worked with people of several different races for over 50 years, I never once had a problem or made a problem with anyone about skin color. Maybe that was because we are all spiritual beings and my mind was on thousands of other things besides skin color. It just felt right to have fun, learn, and grow with all the people I could. When a racist joke or comment was made, I knew at a very young age that it was not right. Since we have lived many lifetimes, is it not possible that many of us have been born a boy in some lifetimes and a girl in some lifetimes? I am not going to go into all the reasons why one could want to be a certain sex, but spiritual beings are here to create things in life that promote life and unless that purpose was somehow messed with, that is what they will do, no matter what gender they identify with. What is important to all spirits ready to come back to Earth is that there is a baby body, mother, home, food, clothing, and other things there to take care of them as human beings. Hopefully, we will have enough people that will keep making enough babies so the human race can keep living. For a young person to get a gun, kill classmates, or anyone could very well be the result of misunderstood words, misinformation, lies, or a combination of all three. If misunderstood words are in any way a factor in these shootings, it is a pretty easy thing to fix. 
just routinely test the students to see if they know their words. This is done in early grades, but not so much in the later grades. Going through school and life, it is pretty easy for young students to accumulate misunderstood words. Even one misunderstood word can mess one's life up pretty badly. A confused mind filled with misunderstood words and lies can cause a downward spiral effect that is not easy to dig out from. School and life become hated things or things they want to destroy because they probably feel like a failure. Understanding all the words should be a big priority all through school, not just the early grades. The same goes for adults, especially those adults who somehow were elevated to important and high places in life or had platforms that many people follow. I wonder how many adult voters know what the words Democrat and Republican really mean. Students should be routinely tested to see if they know and can use all the words they are constantly having to learn, especially students with academic troubles or those who have been red flagged for their actions or their social media connections and rants. Plus, many students are never taught the truth about life, and it starts with what they are, mortal, spiritual beings. Adults in high places should also be word tested. I want to know what they think a human being, woman, and man are. Their beliefs about life, spiritual beings, and the spiritual universe should also be made known. I want to know if they believe in past in future lifetimes or in one lifetime only for themselves and the rest of us. How can someone lead human beings when they don't even know what one is? How can they lead men and women if they don't know what they are and what their true purposes are? People who live life believing they are spiritual beings who live forever feel this lifetime is only one chapter of a never-ending book. They can make mistake after mistake, lifetime after lifetime, but they have forever to get it right. When they reach a goal, they make new goals over and over during their present lifetime, in between lifetimes, and in their future lifetimes. People who believe they only have one lifetime are duped into thinking they better get it right this lifetime because they won't have another lifetime to make it right. They can also make new goals during the present lifetime, but future lifetimes are not real to them, so the goals they make in their current lifetime could be more about getting all they can in their current lifetime, which can lead to greed and only caring about themselves. Yes, many do good, to go to heaven, and they do, but there is a lot more pressure on them to get it right in one lifetime than if they realize they can get it right in a future lifetime. One knowing there are future lifetimes to look forward to will consider the future to be endless. That is much different from the pessimistic one lifetime and that's it belief. Again, God made us in his image and he is an immortal spiritual being, is he not? Did Jesus not prove that there is life after body death? Believing that we only have one lifetime causes one to believe that many other things in life are final, when in fact they are not. Losing loved ones is an awful experience. Believing loved ones will never be seen again is final. That hurts a lot more than believing we all live forever and we can all possibly see each other again. Forever is endless, and Earth is really not that big a place. One can feel another's energy and even attract them with their energy. In the spirit world, it is probably much easier to find loved ones by just thinking about them. This can be done by Earthlings with loved ones in heaven too, and some can communicate with souls in the spirit world. How many times have you felt like you knew someone you just met way before you met them? Or how many times have you felt you were in a place before in another time before this lifetime? These things and past life memories from people that can recall them in and out of therapy absolutely prove that we are spiritual beings and we can live many lifetimes.
Just watch some Abraham Hicks videos. Esther Hicks communicates with a group of beings in the spirit world. They are called Abraham, and through her, they teach the people of Earth how to use the steps of the law of attraction to create things in life, to create a better life, and to enlighten mankind about our spiritual abilities. Esther lectures about your inner being, using your feelings, thoughts, and energy to connect to the energies of the universe and connecting to Source, God, by meditating. She talks about your vortex, the spiritual place where all your desires are stored, the importance of doing things that make you happy in life, and many more topics related to using your spiritual knowledge to build a great life and reach all of your goals. I recommend you start with the video, Abraham Hicks for Beginners. What is the Vortex Law of Attraction? In her videos, Esther helps people to learn how to use the Law of Attraction to manifest or attract what they want to better their lives. If we outflow the right kind of spiritual or mental energy that matches the energy of what or who we want in our lives, we will attract what or who we want in our lives. These videos show plenty of proof that we are spiritual beings and there is a spirit world with spiritual beings that are helping us. Many success stories are told by Esther and the people in her audience. It is obvious that many of these success stories could only be possible because there is a God who created the law of attraction, the energy that is used to create life, the spirit universe, the physical universe, and human beings made in His image. The law of attraction would not work if any of those factors did not exist. There are too many people having great success using the law of attraction for it to be a hoax or scam. Although books and lectures can be purchased, there are many free videos and articles that cost nothing to learn what it is online and how to use it in life. There are many other people online talking about and teaching about the Law of Attraction. Andrea Schulman is another one I enjoy. Too many people in high places do not see the significance of the spiritual side of mankind. That's why they see skin color before they see spiritual values in people and evidence of the spiritual side of a person are ignored. Some people see the relatively few criminals are racist of a race and they label the whole race as being criminal and or racist. Looking at things deeply and using other perceptives is a more spiritual way of viewing things and forming beliefs and conclusions about people and things in life. Spiritually aware people are not limited to seeing only what is material, as some non-spiritual people are. What they feel is different. If one felt another being in the room, it would be believed and acknowledged by a spiritually aware person. The non-spiritual person would not believe it and make up something to make it seem logical to them, which is a lie. What would it be like with a lot more spiritually aware people in the right places on earth? Right now, our leaders are mostly non-believers, spiritually blind, or spiritually ignorant people in government, entertainment, and sports. I even question the beliefs of many of our religious leaders because most of them preach that if you don't believe as they do, you will suffer eternally. I find that hard to believe because we have forever to get everything else right, like reaching difficult goals. Why is there a particular religion the only way to spiritually be free or survive after this lifetime? If you don't know by now, there is a big difference between a person that can take a truly spiritual viewpoint and all others. Currently, people with true spiritual viewpoints are speaking up and getting involved. So a wave of spiritual enlightenment has been started and is growing very quickly. I hope some of you who are having trouble defining what a woman, man, and human being is can now see why. I would sure like to see the question, in your own words, what is a human being, asked more everywhere, especially in high places.